Hey, what's up Packer fans? Coach Hahn here with you on behalf of Packernet.com. Back in the film room to take a look at a couple of questions that I got from viewers. I got two separate questions that I'm going to try to lump into one for this video. So YouTube user Rizvo had asked me, can you explain a little bit how Mike Pettin's defense work? And then Facebook user Christopher Malagasy, I'm pretty sure I butchered that name, my apologies. He asked me specifically, how does that inside linebacker play within Mike Pettin's defense? A couple of excellent questions, and I could go on and on for like hours about this defense. I certainly don't understand all of it, don't get me wrong, but what I'm gonna try to do in this video is give you just a very broad overview of what this defense looks like, and then we'll look at it in the run game first um, to show you kind of some of the things that Pettin likes to do, specifically for teams like Minnesota coming up this week. So Pettin at his core runs a base 3-4, but a couple of things about Pettin. First and foremost, he is so very multiple. He can run all sorts of different schemes. He's got a 3-4, a 4-2, a 4-3, a 5-2, a 5-1, a 5-4. I mean, the guy is just crazy multiple, and he's really, really good at putting people in positions where they don't get blocked, and I'll show you a little bit of that on the whiteboard coming up. But another thing to make note of, Mike Pettin is way smarter than I am and he's way smarter than you are. Whether you like to admit it or not, dude's a pro football coach and a high, high level pro football defensive coordinator. So understand that there's a lot of this stuff that I don't really truly understand yet. So just kind of take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, okay? But at his base, which is what I'll show you here first, he's a three, four guy. He's gonna have a couple of four technique defensive ends. He likes to have a true nose and he'll play with these techniques, which I'll show you in a bit. Then the Mike and the Sam backer are the two inside backers that he uses, the Will and the Buck, when they're against a balanced formation like this, will apex or split the difference between the slot receiver and the tackle here and here, okay? They'll just split the difference as well. He likes to try to stay in a too high shell in base with a couple of corners up. There's a lot of different coverages and run fits that he can play against this. This is base. Do not expect to see a whole lot of base at all this week against Minnesota. And here's why. Base works pretty darn good for a balanced formation like this, where you have two by two and a single 10 personnel, one running back, no tight end type of setup, okay? Minnesota does not like to run base, or excuse me, um, 10 personnel hardly at all. So it's gonna force Petten to get out of base, which he's fine with. Minnesota loves using tight ends. 11 personnel, 12 personnel, 22 personnel, all that sort of stuff. Loves having tight ends on the field, okay? So that's gonna put that receiver off. Now, anytime the offense adds a tight end, essentially what they're doing when they attach a tight end on the, on the line is they're adding a gap. Now there's not just these gaps in here, A gap, B gap, C gap. Now there's a D gap that has to be accounted for. So the defense has to account for that as well. Otherwise you have running lanes. Essentially you've added the potential for another blocker. One of the things I've noticed in film that Patton likes to do is he likes to shade the defensive line to the weak side. So you'll get a defensive end here and a five, you'll get a shaded nose, and sometimes you'll get a three technique out of that tackle. And then what he'll do is he'll walk that outside backer up on the line, and then he'll shift to what we call backer over strong, or a boss technique, okay? So you'll have your sand backer here and your mic backer here. Okay? And there's a lot of different variations of the way that he plays it, but this is one of the ones that he likes to do. Sometimes he shifts that D-line over strong and puts the backers over weak in what we call a bow technique. But there's all sorts of different things he does just depending on how he wants to account for that tight end in the throw game. But again, we're talking about run game. So let's see how this whole defense works, okay? With the defense in red and now the offense set up in 11 personnel, um, kind of a, a uh, double look out of 11 personnel. We'll talk about, start to talk about the jobs of the defensive linemen and how they correlate to the inside backers. One of the things Petten is so good at, and I envy him for it, is he does everything he can to ensure that one of his inside linebackers has a free run, okay? Has nobody really blocking him at all on the plate. And the way that he does that is by asking these guys up on the line, some of them at certain times to two gap technique. And what that means is on a run your way, he's gonna ask you to eat up two different blockers. But that only works if we have this set really well. This is called the edge, or some coaches call it the force. In this scenario, if the offense were to run to the defensive's right, this backer right here, this outside backer, or this edge rusher, he must maintain force. 
And what force is, is if the ball gets out here, he's got to be out here and force that back to the inside, back to where Pet is going to have an unblocked defender, hopefully. Okay, so this outside backer here must align in an outside shade to the last man on the line of scrimmage, and he cannot get reached. He has to keep his outside arm free and force everything back to the inside. And then here is where the magic is really going to happen, specifically with these defensive linemen. What Petten's going to ask is that on the snap of the ball, if they see movement towards them, go reach that tackle. Now you're going to eat that double team, and you're going to keep your hands on that tackle while that guard is moving to you. Okay? Usually what happens in some sort of wide zone set is that center's coming out to get the Sam. We're going to try to hook the nose here, and one of two things will happen. We'll either lock on the back side of that, month, of that five type, or he'll try to get up to the mic, but he's not going to get there. Because what happens is usually Petten's backside inside linebacker is just watching flow. He's the free runner. So in a wide zone look like this, he has the ability to just run like mad. Okay, this will be end up being a B, or excuse me, a C gap to secondary force defender, and that Mike now gets to just play tailback for the defense. He gets to read this, run like mad, and wherever it looks like that tailback is going to insert, he can also just run and insert and make the play right there. He never has to worry about cutback responsibility because you've got a couple of guys here playing cutback as well. So you, this will linebacker will come up, usually come up to what's called BCR, or he's just going to hold the back side of the line for any boot or counter or reverse or anything weird coming out of the backfield. And then this safety can fill down into the cut back lane should this back decide to put his foot in the ground and come back. So Petten does a really good job with trying to get some of these inside backers a free run. Sometimes that means that this defensive tackle right here doesn't get to make a lot of plays because he's got to hold on to offensive linemen so they can't peel up and come make that block on that running back, okay, or that running backer, excuse me. So if an offensive lineman gets a chip on this de defensive end and then can come up and seal this edge for the running linebacker, this play is going to go big places, okay? If this defensive end right here doesn't have the ability to hold two offensive linemen to his play side, he's going to be in trouble. Okay? Also, this Mike linebacker and this cutback player right here, in this case the free safety, if they don't have the ability to make a play in the hole when it's there, that's an issue. That's a personnel issue and I'll let you guys deal with you know, who's the better linebacker and all that sort of stuff, I truly don't know. But this is the scheme of things, okay? And it's just the, the most basic base form of the rules in Petten's defense. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at what it looks like on the field. We're going to start this off by taking a look at a play from last year in week two, Minnesota versus Green Bay. Uh, we're looking at all 22 film because that way we get a really good read on the first steps of the offensive linemen, as well as any adjustments made by the linebackers and defensive line. We're going to take a look at exactly how this defense should look. We'll see a little bit of motion here from Minnesota. You'll see Kyle Rudolph stuff off the line and then come shift over. You can see we're in 12 personnel. We have one tight end right here, and then two running backs in the backfield. You'll watch the shift occur from the defensive line. We've noticed this D end came to a true head up style, and then the linebackers will also shift their adjustments. This is going to be a run to the defense's left, okay? And what we're gonna look at, number one, first and foremost here, is a great edge right here. As this great edge occurs, it allows us to get some secondary edge stuff going. And we have this, this in this case, the Mike linebacker is going to get taken up by the reaching right tackle. But you need to watch right here, Blake Martinez as the, <clears throat> in this case, the sandbacker, but the backside inside linebacker does a really nice job of seeing this hole exactly where the running back Alexander Madison is going to see it. And we're going to watch a great job here by the interior line holding on to those offensive linemen so they can't reach up. What Minnesota's trying to do is run wide zone, and they're really hoping to get this left guard all the way up into Martinez's path. But it's not going to happen, as you'll see here shortly. As this play continues to develop, great job on the chip, not allowing the release to happen right here by 97, your nose tackle. He's not going to allow that clean release to happen by that left guard. You see that little punch with the right arm there, and then the tuck and roll will give us a, just a clean shot at Martinez. You can see this left guard has no chance of intercepting that path because Martinez gets to play so fast. Great edge set right here by Smith. Right there is a great edge. 
You see us take on the block of the fullback, but Martinez beats the running back to the hole. That's exactly what this defense is supposed to look like. Set the edge, let the backside inside run free. Now we're going to take a look at a clip from this weeks or this year's excuse me week one matchup from minnesota and green bay and we're going to see a couple of things go wrong here i want you to keep your eyes on number 97 you can see he is a weak side shade here he's the back side one tech or two eye however you want to call it to me that's a one tech you can notice that the defense has shifted to the tight end side um that's a, a game plan thing and then here we have the play side inside backer and here number 51 is the back side inside backer Okay, what we're hoping is on any run going to the defense's left or going this way, 97 can stretch and get hands on tackle, not allowing him to get up to this inside linebacker, this backside inside linebacker. But you're going to see number 97 try to knife the gap and cut through it. See, he initially gets hands on that tackle right here. If I'm understanding this defense correctly, he should be driving through the chest plate of that tackle and not allowing him to reach up to the backside inside backer. You'll see that not occur. Now, all of a sudden, we can get a tackle onto that backside inside backer, and it's a great running lane for the Vikings running back. Now, 51 still makes the play. He's a good hustle player, you know, still comes down with the play, but it's eight yards down the line of scrimmage. Obviously, not what we want to see. Thought they did a nice job of setting the edge or setting the force, but unfortunately, had a lineman up the field. We'll see another one where it doesn't exactly work out well for the Green Bay Packers defense right here. We have a very similar look. We have a five tech, even though he's in a stand up, he's in a nose position playing a zero technique and then a backside five tech. And you can see the strong inside backer, the weak, or excuse me, the Mike inside backer, the backside inside backer right here, he should be the free runner. Then we have a force player here, a force to boot counter reverse. And then this player right here, this is a nickel back in this situation. This should be the cutback player, okay? So he should be slow filling into here should the running back, in this case, Delvin Cook, take it this way, decide that gap is closed and try to put his foot in the ground to cut it back. That's what makes wide zone so deadly, or in this case, lock wide zone. Okay, you'll see the Sam backer right here, the strong side inside backer do a great job of walling the fullback off, walling it off in the hole. Unfortunately, our nose tackle decided to spin and put his back to the ball, which allowed the right guard to get up and reach the free running mic. That's not very good. And you can see a giant hole here. However, we do still have a cutback player who should be closing the gap. So you should be in pretty good shape, even though that mic is getting blocked, we should be in okay shape here, caging it. You'll see all of a sudden, because that might got pushed out of position just a little bit by that blocker coming up. And now the cutback player can't quite make the play. Well, this is going to go explode for a little bit more. That's why we really want those D tackles to hold on to those backside guards when they get run to them. Okay, we need to plug it up. Right here, however, the play right before the safety for Minnesota, we'll see a really nice job by the defensive line and the linebacking core. Again, we're going to run to now the offense's right, the defense's left, okay, but a very similar play pattern where it's going to be kind of a lock lead zone type of look. And we're going to watch the defensive line do a great job of holding things up. We'll get a really nice force here and another great collision on the fullback, some good scrape over the top with some good hustle by the backside D end, and we're going to watch this play develop into nearly nothing okay so right here the snap of the football we're going to be in a three tech a nose technique and a five tech on the back side right here this is an unbelievable job starting to set that uh block up for the fullback we're going to do a great job of taking that on we've got a good force here not allowing this thing to come outside and as you can see if everything stayed right now we'd have a free runner backside to come get delvin cook while we do have somebody playing for cutback as well. Now you'll watch this collision happen right at the goal line, which is exactly where it needs to happen. Great job by that inside backer. You'll see the right guard right here come off just a touch late, okay? And because he comes off a touch late, he can't really get a solid block on this backside inside backer. So that's a pretty darn good job by this guy eating a double team. Not perfect, but you'll see what happens if you still can't get a solid block and you get a couple of inside backers and defensive linemen that want to hustle to the ball, it's going to set you up in really good positions to stop this Minnesota Viking running attack. And as you remember, the next play resulted in a Jair Alexander safety and Green Bay was off and running. So these are just a few things that I've seen. Again, my name is Coach Hahn for Packernet.com. Um, if you saw it differently or if you have any other questions, please let me know and then stay tuned because next week we'll try to look at some of the base coverages that Mike Petton likes to run.